Welcome to this new Jakarta EE quick start guide. In this tutorial, I will give you an introduction for the Jakarta messaging specification. So before the Java EE project moved to Eclipse, the Eclipse Foundation, the specification was named JMS and after the transition, it's now called Jakarta messaging. So right now the latest specification version is 2.0 and it's technically the same compared to the old JMS from the Java EE times. So to show you a simple example, how you can use this specification to send messages back and forth, I have prepared a simple application. So it's a Jakarta EE application running on Open Liberty with Java 11. I've just included the Jakarta EE API and the Liberty Maven plugin to later on deploy it. Jakarta messaging comes with two delivery modes. The first is topics, so it's a published subscribe model and the other delivery mode is queues. So queues are for point-to-point -point communication. And for this example, I will show you how you can send messages and read messages from a queue. For a quick example, I will use the embedded messaging feature of Open Liberty. So um, to define the queue, we can use our server.xml file and within this messaging engine section define which queues or which topics we want to create in this embedded engine. And so there are actually way more parameters to define, but for a simple example, this is enough. Once we define our queue here, we have to define a JMS queue connection factory and actually give it the address of the remote server. So within here, it's localhost. It's the embedded engine of, of Liberty. If you would use something like IBM MQ or any other messaging engine, you would have to specify the host name and the port and the credentials here. For this JMS factory, we also need a JNDI name to later on look it up and create the connection within our source code. So here we specify a JNDI name. For the actual queue, we also have to create a JNDI name and here I'm calling it JMS slash JMS queue. And later on to process messages with message driven beans, we can activate our message driven beans within our server XML file here. So Open Liberty comes with different um, solutions to actually activate a message driven bean. Here I've chosen uh, this solution and to activate this message driven bean we have to specify our message driven bean here so it's the name of the the war file the artifact id then a slash and then the name of the java class which is going to consume the messages and here we specify to which jmsq this message driven bean should connect and which messages it should process so to now send messages actually to this queue, I've created a EJB with a simple timer, which will send every five seconds a, a message to this queue. So to send it, we first have to create a connection. We can create this connection from our JMS factory, which we can look up with this JNDI name we specified in our server XML. After we obtain the connection, we need actually a session and a message producer. Though so the session we get from the JMS connection and the producer uh, can be created uh, using the session and the injectors JMS queue. So then we will actually have a producer which will produce the message for exactly this queue which we defined here, which is also looked up via uh, JNDI. The actual send method is quite easy. We are creating a text message. So there are different messages available. So if you have a look at the actual message interface of Jakarta Messaging 2.0, we can see the different implementations here. So there's a byte message, object message, stream message, and also this text message, which I'm going to use. And within this text message, we can set a text. And for this text, I will use JSONB to deserialize a Java object and send it over the wire using JSON data structure. So this create custom message here will construct a custom message object and then use JSONB to create the JSON string and then put it into the message and send it. 
So that's everything for the sending side. On the receiving side, we are using a message driven beam. You can see this with this annotation here and it implements this message listener interface. And if you implement this interface, you have to override uh, or implement one public method on message. And this on message um, will be called whenever there is a message in this queue and we can process it. So I'm using this message and as I know with this will be a text message, I can here cast it to a text message and can then uh, obtain the actual string here. So I will just print out the string and then use JSONB again to recreate a JSON object to give you an example how you you could implement this. There's actually much more on this message. So there's also some metadata available. So there are some JMS metadata data structures available, which you can use. So there's also a timestamp and the priority and much more. But for this example, the, the actual text is enough. So once this is set up, we can now start Open Liberty and deploy the application. So to start it, as already mentioned, I'm using the Liberty Maven plugin and we'll start up in Liberty in development mode. So once it's up and running, it should send a message every five seconds and we should receive it on the other side. And as you can see on the logs, uh, whenever I'm sending a message, I'm printing out this sending a new message statement. And on the other side, we're extracting this text message First, I will print out the, the JSON context and then parse it again and use the toString method of our object. This was just a simple example. So there's way more to explore with JMS and way more to configure for a productive use case. Make sure to have a look at the resources I'm providing in the description tab to learn more about Jakarta messaging and have fun using it. Mm -hmm.